Last week I made a reaction to a video that listed some celebrities from Canada that people might not know about or might not know are Canadian. Now I feel like I knew most of them but I, there was definitely people on there like Ryan Gosling that I never knew were from Canada. So I thought it was very interesting and it was great for me just to find out more about Canadian personalities. And today we're going to be doing something similar but a little bit different. This one that I'm going to be watching today is called 10 Canadian Celebrities That Only Canadians Know. So again, I'm interested to know if I actually know anybody on this list, but for me, I think this list will be good because I hopefully I'll be learning about people I don't actually know. Uh, maybe some of the people on this list I can watch some video, more in-depth videos about and learn more about as well, but tell me if you're from Canada, if you know the people on this list, uh, tell me what they mean to you. Let's check it out. Hello everybody, my name is JJ and today I thought we would talk about famous Canadians. But not famous Canadians in the sense of famous Canadian born celebrities like Drake or Bieber or Deadpool. We all know enough about them already. And not famous Canadians in the sense of politicians either. If you want to learn more about those jerks, you can watch one of my many Canadian Whoa. politics themed videos. Whoa. No, today we are simply going to talk about a few people who are famous in Canada, but nowhere else. People who aren't even necessarily well loved or liked in Canada, but are just sort of well known for doing what they do. So famous this Canadian number one is Don Cherry. If you are a fan of ice hockey, you might already know this guy. He is Canada's most famous hockey commentator and has been for the last three decades or so. Don Cherry is presently 84 years old and is a sort of very clownish kind of guy. He is famous for these preposterous outfits that he wears, which have gotten steadily more and more Whoa. extreme over the years. I believe he now gets <laughs> Wait, a, man, gotten come on, steadily man. more and more extreme over the years. What? <laughs> is that for St. Patrick's Day or something, man? That is a next level outfit. Yeah, some of those outfits they are pushing the boundaries of taste. I believe he now gets a suit custom made for every appearance he makes on his show, Hockey Night in Canada. Many people would argue that his mind is also starting to get a little bit more clownish with age. See, Cherry's whole gimmick is that he's this real tough guy who tells it like it is. He's very blunt in telling you which hockey players are good boys and which ones are bums. But as we all know, when it comes to old men, there is a rather thin line between, you know, telling it like it is and just this. Oh no, there's no, you never kids, you never do that. We wear shirts and ties. We got class, the other two guys were Russians or something like that. Never be a hot dog, and karma always comes back and gets you. It's true. There's actually a very funny <laughs> channel on Canadian YouTube that is all about attempting to transcribe Don Cherry's various rants. Hey, you watch, you didn't, couldn't even see the, look, and, and hey, we, I was supposed to watch the stick go down like a dum-dum, my, my, one of my favorites. As you saw, Don Cherry always has this straight man beside him named Ron McLean, who sort of tries to keep Don Cherry under control in the same sense that one of those guys with the chairs keeps the lion under control. There is a certain sort of blue collar, usually very conservative Canadian who is very loyal to Don Cherry because he's seen as this sort of class symbol. But to the vast majority of Canadians, I would say Don Cherry is one of those people who is well known just for being well known. Number two. Yeah, so tell me more about Don Cherry. As I mentioned on previous videos, I have another channel and I've reacted to a lot of hockey videos a lot of hockey highlights, so I don't know if I've heard his voice before, I, I don't recognise the name, uh, but he seems like a very interesting character, I mean, just the way he looks is obviously quite out there, uh, but his attitude and his personality seem quite interesting, tell me what you think about him, whether it's positive, negative, of course he's been around the game for so long, so I'm guessing he's a very, very much an expert of hockey, uh, so I guess he's, he brings a lot to the table in that role, but... Uh, tell me, yeah, what you think about him. Two is David Suzuki. So way on the other end of the spectrum, we have Dr. David Suzuki, who is probably Canada's most famous science celebrity. Dr. Suzuki had his own TV show for a while, and he runs a charitable organization these days. But I would say, much like Don Cherry, he is best known just for being famous. Suzuki spends a lot of his time running around saying that things are bad for the environment and everybody has to listen to him because, I mean, he's David Suzuki. Suzuki is very left-wing politically, which has made him this very polarizing figure. I would say he's a lot like Al Gore in the sense of someone who holds himself up as this real great moral authority when it comes to the environment. We can do it. 
It just means we have to change our mindset. Progressive groups all suck up to him and crave his stamp of approval, whereas right-wing groups all really treat him as this very sort of demonic figure. So you have two sides in Canada that are basically like, oh, did you hear what Dr. Suzuki had to say? Versus, who cares what David Suzuki has to say? Number three. Yeah, so in another interesting character that I've never heard anything of before. I don't know, maybe I've seen his name pop up on like Joe Rogan or something like that, but he might have been interviewed on there, but it seems like at heart what he wants like for the environment and so on is, is a good thing. I don't know how these things always got always get like conflated or like associated with political views as well. I know that obviously caring about the environment can be seen as a sort of more left wing thing, but why can't everybody, no matter their political belief, just care about like the environment and want in a better place? When you start to politicize things like that, that's when it causes trouble. And you see, he just because of his political stance, it means that like fifty percent of the people or whatever number it is, just won't take any of his viewpoints into consideration. So, for me, whether the left, right, whatever your political belief, I feel like that should just keep its own place, as much as it might affect these these uh, these things. Uh, but yeah, tell me more about David Suzuki. Is Jordan Peterson? Okay, okay Jordan this Peterson one isn't really before. very fair because obviously everyone knows who Jordan Peterson is at this point. Or at the very least, you probably do since you're watching YouTube. Jordan Peterson is this psychology professor from the University of Toronto and conservative people all really love him because he's very against the sort of things that conservative people generally don't like, like political correctness and communism. He has this very big internet following these days, which means he is often the subject of a lot of profiles in the mainstream press. One important thing about Jordan Peterson is I think he is a very good example of how a famous Canadian generally behaves. See, at some point when you become a famous enough Canadian, you generally stop thinking and talking about Canadian stuff and just start acting as an American. Because at that point, you probably have a lot more American fans than Canadian fans, and you're probably getting a lot more work in the States than in Canada. So in other words, like most legitimately famous Canadians, I don't think that Jordan Peterson really seems very Canadian these days, except for his accent. You want to specify goals that make you say, oh, if that could happen as a consequence of my efforts, it would clearly be worthwhile because the question always is, why do something? I'm actually hoping to do an interview with him someday, because as a psychologist, I think he might have some interesting things to say about the sort of fragile nature of the Canadian identity. Number four. Yeah, definitely. I've heard of Jordan Peterson. I've seen his videos on YouTube and things like that. And it's like, it's weird because, again, another very polarizing figure for some reason. It's like, again, it's when politics come into these things and you see it, as I mentioned here, it's kind of opposite to David Suzuki, where it's the right wing say the things that like, like or like support Jordan Peterson and everybody on the left just seems to dismiss everything he's got to say. Whenever I've heard him speak, he seems to be quite sensible and say things that actually that mean something. Like I'm not like a huge supporter of him either way, uh, but I, I don't see any problem with what he says in general. Like maybe there's some things he said that I don't know about that can be controversial, but uh, tell me what you think about him being from Canada. I feel like sometimes I've seen him talk about Canadian issues as well, so I don't agree completely that he doesn't that he only focuses on the American market. I've heard him talk about uh, like the education system in Canada and different things before. Uh, but an interest, very interesting man, seems very intelligent. But I guess he's had his troubles as well from what I've seen. Uh, intelligent, but could be classes being a bit complicated as well. Or is George Strombolopoulos. Speaking of the way that fame works in Canada. See, one important thing to know about this country is that when you are a famous TV celebrity in Canada, a lot of Canadians will hate you because a lot of Canadians really hate Canadian television. George Strombolopoulos, or Strombo as most people call him, used to be a personality on the Canadian version of MTV, which was called Too Much Music. And then he sort of fell in with the CBC crowd, with the CBC being Canada's government-run television station. For many years, Strombo had this interview show on the CBC 
where he acted all cool and relaxed as he interviewed celebrities. And real celebrities too, not just fake Canadian celebrities like Dr. Suzuki. But Strombo was ultimately the opposite of somebody like Jordan Peterson because he was never able to be successful in America. ABC and CNN gave him shows on their stations, assuming rather naively that he was legitimately popular in Canada. And in both cases, those shows were canceled after less than one season. I don't actually know what Strombo is up to these days. There was a brief period of time in which he was on the Hockey Night in Canada show with Don Cherry. But in any case, his name is still very much synonymous with what it means to be a TV star in Canada, which is to say not anything good. Number five. Yeah, so interesting, George Strombolopoulos. Again, never heard of him, but I mentioned on that previous video that I watched that I'd be interested to learn more about people who are famous in Canada, but never managed to make it to the USA or get that worldwide exposure and things. And he seems like the like a perfect example of that. He's hosted a lot of like big shows and might not have been successful. Uh, but tell me if there's anybody else like him that's like kind of synonymous with Canadian TV and Canadian movies, but never really made that jump to the US or any other country. Five is Margaret Atwood. So I guess Margaret Atwood is pretty well known around the world too, isn't she? In any case, she is Canada's most famous writer show. and is particularly famous at the moment since she wrote the book that that series The Handmaid's Tale is based on. Not Canada famous. has not really produced that many famous writers. We are more of an actor and musician sort of place, which means that Margaret Atwood has long enjoyed a very elevated position as like the one big Canadian author that everyone has to know and care about. Canadian kids in school are often made to study her stories and poetry in English class, particularly the ones that are actually about Canada in some way, like The Blind Assassin or Alias Grace. Atwood's books are usually these rather dark stories, often about a young woman who is being oppressed by society's conventions. She is a strong feminist, which has made her a very polarizing figure, as strong feminists tend to be. Number six. It's interesting that so, like, so many of these personalities so far the only Canadians know are quite, seem to be, based on the description uh, by this commentator, that they are quite polarizing uh, people. I thought with like the Canadian uh, personality or that stereotypical personality that everybody would just be more like just easy going and just like everybody loves them and that sort of thing. But here they definitely have like, uh, have that polarizing nature. I never heard of her. I mean, that just probably shows how une like uneducated or uncultured that I am by not knowing such a famous author of a famous uh, novel there. But I I quite enjoy that the Canadian education uh, like schools and si the education system that put her works into that and allow children to learn again, especially because it's somebody from their own country. I guess it can provide as well as providing good. Uh, good study material can also good, provide good inspiration that it's their ca fellow Canadian that they're reading about or reading their work. This is Peter Mansbridge. Peter Mansbridge was the host of the CBC Evening News for 30 years from 1988 to 2017. His retirement last year was treated as this really big deal, at least by the CBC. He was this sort of boring, familiar presence to a lot of people who watch the CBC News every night, which is actually not that many. It is possible you might recognize Peter Mansbridge from his brief viral sensation a few years back. Since Mansbridge was on the air for such a god-awful length of time, Time, it was easy to go through the CBC archives and find embarrassing clips of him talking about extremely out-of-date things. And a few years back, somebody found this clip. They log on to personal computers connected to phone lines and communicate across cultures and continents. Bill Cameron has this report on the growing phenomenon of internet. Number seven. I, think, I don't think that's very, un that's like quite a normal opinion people had at the time, you know, like based for the internet, like... Uh, but again, people like that, in the UK we have similar news readers and people that you don't really take much notice of, but they're there every day, so they actually become like a relatively big part of people's life, maybe a small part of people's life that they, they, see, they check in with every day, get their news, and it's like this person, it just becomes like part of your living room. Uh, so tell me what your thoughts on 
somebody like that are. Is Andrew Coyne. So I would say Andrew Coyne is probably Canada's most famous journalist. He writes weekly columns about Canadian politics and has done so for several decades. He also goes on TV a lot, which makes him famous too. See, here he is with Strombo, and here he is with Mansbridge. So Coyne is considered sort of broadly conservative, but a big part of his success is that his views are actually kind of all over the place. He has some very right-wing views, and then some very left-wing views, and then like some very libertarian views sprinkled in between. This means that almost everyone will like and share his columns once in a while. But on the other hand, Coyne is also seen as this very elitist, establishment-y, snobby kind of guy. I mean, let's just listen to him talk for a few seconds. You know that American phrase of politics stops at the water's edge? Nobody's been observing that rule of late in this country. We had the spectacle of the, the, at the Copenhagen conference with opposition parties going and announcing they had a different position than the government. When the Chinese president ripped into our prime minister on his visit, uh, the opposition leaders took the Chinese dictatorship side against the prime minister. So they all have something to answer for this, but certainly this is a pretty uh, strident and egregious example. That's basically how he talks about everything. So if you're one of these guys that really hates the mainstream media, in Canada, Coyne mm -hmm. is very much the guy that you hold up as the symbol of it and go around saying things like, oh yeah, well, of course, Andrew Coyne would say that. Number eight. See, I know, I, I don't know, I, again, I don't know anything about him, so I can't actually speak on who he is as a person, but just with regards to his like political viewpoint where he has some right-wing views, left-wing views, libertarian views and stuff, I don't see any problem with that. I think, like, if that's probably similar to the way I am, like, I really, my political views are, like, it depending on the actual issue itself and how educated I am on that and... If I'm not educated enough, I'll definitely educate myself to try and get be, have a stronger opinion on things. Uh, but I just wonder, in his case, is it like is he just trying to be popular and trying to like tick the boxes for everybody, or is that just really the way he is? Ezra Levant. Speaking of people who hate the media, Ezra Levant is basically Canada's leading right-wing media celebrity, although his star has fallen a bit in recent years. He used to be the star of his own show on the conservative Sun News Network, which, full disclosure, I used to work for as well. I even used to go on his show once in a while, including one episode that was too offensive for Canadian TV. I will link in the description below to my video about that story. Anyway, Ezra is this very jolly sort of guy who really likes being provocative while being jolly, which makes him drive a lot of people like completely bananas. Saint Suzuki himself has called for politicians to be jailed for not believing in his theory of man-made global warming. Well, Suzuki's going to give me the death penalty for this. I shall now commit first-degree lumberjacking on this poor tree. Happy Earth Day, Sam. <laughs> Fire up the chainsaw. After Sun News what? shut down in 2015, <laughs> Ezra Levant made his own right-wing news website called The Rebel. It actually wound up being a lot more edgy and right-wing than Sun News itself. For folks on the left, that has made Ezra sort of evolve from just a sort of obnoxious figure to something much more sinister. But you know, he also just recently passed a million subscribers, so what are you gonna do? Number nine is Rick Mercer. Now, I must confess to you, I personally find Rick Mercer to be incredibly annoying. He is yet another guy from phony baloney CBC television world. So Mercer is an alleged comedian by training. He used to be one of the hosts of this painfully unfunny CBC show called This Hour Has 22 Minutes that offered very mild commentary on political events. Then in 2004, they gave him his own show, The Rick Mercer Report, which was supposed to be Canada's answer to like Jon Stewart or John Oliver or someone like that. But this premise was hampered somewhat by the fact that Rick Mercer was neither funny nor clever and no one watched him. But since he was on a station run by the government, that didn't matter and his show got to last for 15 seasons anyway. Mercer is quite left wing and one of the segments on his show that he was best known for was when he would yell various left wing things in front of these graffito covered walls. He is from Newfoundland and he has this sort of Newfoundland accent, which I guess made this sort of fun. Donald Trump is like a natural disaster, except one that reoccurs every day. Oh yes, and the other thing Mercer is quite well known for is his talking to Americans bit. This is basically just a ripoff of Jay Leno's famous jaywalking bit, where he would try to embarrass people by asking them really dumb questions. But since Canadians are too sensitive to being humiliated in that way, Mercer would always just go down to the States and try to humiliate Americans instead. He would tell Americans various preposterous lies about things that were supposedly going on in Canada, and since Americans are so polite, they would all just nod 
nod and be like, oh, wow, that sounds great. Speaking as a political science student, I guess you're happy to see that Canada's prime minister is a Chinese Canadian? Yeah, I hope that America follows with that. <laughs> and now there's some discussion that we should finally get in line with the United States and move on a 24-hour clock. It would be very confusing. This is the first I've heard about it. I had no idea that Canada was on a 20-hour 20 uh, 20 clock. Well, if it's a managed rhinoceros hunt, do you think it'd be okay? Yeah, I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Then the Canadian viewers back home would feel all smug and superior and laugh and laugh. Although he did troll Mike Huckabee once, and that was pretty good. Congratulations, Canada, on preserving your national igloo. Thank you, Governor. And finally, we have the last famous... Tell me if, you should, if I should make a reaction to those videos. They sound quite interesting, but I don't know... Yeah, like what people's opinions of, of that sort of content would be. Tell me in the comments. Canadian, Christopher Hatfield. Though we haven't heard much from this guy in a while, Chris Hatfield was probably one of the most famous Canadians on Earth circa 2014 or so. As you can see, Chris Hatfield was an astronaut. In 2013, he served as the first ever Canadian commander of the International Space Station, which was kind of a big deal because as you might expect, Canada does not produce a lot of astronauts. But what made Commander Hatfield truly famous was his love of the spotlight. During his time in space, he would do lots of antics, like play his guitar, or sing, or do interesting science experiments, or post cool photos on social media. And then when he got back to Earth, he really tried to milk his reputation as the cool dad astronaut as much as possible, churning out books and cartoons and music videos and all of that sort of thing. But then I think Canada collectively started to feel a little bit of Chris Hatfield burnout, because you don't see him as much anymore. He does have a relatively popular YouTube channel called Rare Earth, although rather revealingly, he doesn't seem to appear in many videos. So yes, that is 10 famous Canadians for you. Question for my international viewers, have you heard of any of these people? And question for my Canadian viewers, do you know anybody that I should have included but I didn't? And who would you include if you were making a similar list about people from your country? Remember- Yeah, tell me more about that. Tell me your opinions. Should, is there anybody that should have been on that list that wasn't? Uh, Chris Hadfield, I've heard of him before. I think I've seen like his videos when they went viral in space and things, but I never really knew much of him as a personality. Uh, I don't know, like, was it wrong to come back and try and, uh, like, as he said, milk it? I don't don't see anything wrong with it. He done something very special. He's an astronaut. Not many people can say they did that. If he wants to come back and try and monetize that and do some songs and do some other fun stuff, I, I for me, go ahead. But interesting video to answer his question. I really never knew any of them apart from Jordan Peterson. Uh, and the, Chris Hadfield as well, I guess. Uh, but very interesting characters. Not what not what I was expecting actually. I didn't think it would be such controversial figures, if that is fair. Uh, but interesting. Really, I feel like this. I learned more about Canadian culture in this video compared to the last one because I'm learning about people I never knew knew about and especially people that are very well known in Canada as well that maybe people in other countries don't know about like, like me but tell me what you think about that list is there anybody on that list that you like anybody you dislike for any reason uh, yeah thanks